So slowly, time goes by. So slowly. Okay. Hello. Um, we're in a different location today, but we're back with a daily reading. Um, time goes by. So slowly, time goes by. So slowly. I've been thinking about doing um, readings for uh, all of the signs is giving a lot, but maybe for the different elements. Maybe. Maybe. If the universe were to sleep, where would her dreams lead? Can you imagine? Okay, so the first card to come out is the High Priest of Atlantis. Chakra healing. Time goes by, so slowly, time goes by, so slowly. Um, the first thing that I was thinking of is that, oh, is that energy um, is within and all around your body. Oh. The energy is within and all around your body. Um, with this chakra healing card, like it's interesting because we have our main energy centers, and I was thinking about this this morning because of what I was remembering about what a woman had said that I um, I heard her say this last week. She was talking about the chakras within your ears. Like there's, you know, you have chakra main points all throughout your body, and then you have um, the different ways that the chakras show up in different parts of your body. So that energy really is all throughout. It carries everywhere. You have them in your feet. You have them, I think, in, you have them in your hands, in your ears. So they're everywhere. It's not just, you know, crown chakra, third eye, throat chakra, heart, uh, solar plexus, uh, sacral and root. And even beyond that, there are even more chakras that you have that we just don't um, that I guess in this time frame, in this world, we don't get, it's not so easy to access. Um, maybe there's just a few frameworks that would have to be unlocked in order to get there. But yeah, this first card with the High Priest of Atlantis is making me feel like energy is within and all around you. And so there's also this sense of trusting what you pick up Trusting what it is that you sense, even if it's not a feeling that you can set, that is settled within your body, something that doesn't feel familiar, something that you can't rationalize, there's still this energy of believing. <laughs> believing in what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Believe in yourself. Um, yeah, and that's because your senses are strong. And it's almost like um, believing what you feel with the elements. You know, like, the elements are their own energies, and they've existed far beyond our own existence as human beings on this planet. Um, but we feel them, and we trust them, and we know what we experience when they come into our own energetic space, and we trust the messages that they bring us and the healing that they bring us, and what they, um, the value that they have, because it's just a deep knowing beyond all the scientific data and all of, you know, the things that can be proven in the physical, there's a knowing. And that's why it's in, the elements are an energy, a spiritual energy that exists within every belief system because it's something that is collectively resonant. It's undeniable, it's a universal energy. Time goes by so slowly. Time goes by so slowly. Hmm. And there's even this energy of kind of, of um, as much as there's this energy of trusting what you can sense even if it doesn't feel settled in your body, there's also this energy of trusting what your body is telling you. Like um, today I woke up and I just was kind of already feeling a bit slow. And then I did my yoga, and it was just so much more apparent, all the work that I have to do while I was 
doing my yoga session. Um, and it was one of those moments where it was very important for me to listen to what my body is saying to me. And also with that information, not becoming passive in your own healing, but stepping into a place of power and seeing what it is that you can do, how can you contribute to your body's healing. You know, because we are our own healers and we can heal ourselves. So there's also that energy. Time goes by so slowly. Every little thing that you say I'll do and There's also this energy of like allowing, <laughs> there's this energy of also allowing things to just be like, um, there's been a few feathers that have flowed by me and I've wanted to go and grab them and like save them. Um, but I didn't and I couldn't even catch them. It's almost this energy of um, releasing the need to contain or um, releasing the need to hold or to fully, um, oh yeah, well that's what I was saying, there's energy within and all around you and that energy will not run out. So there's this energy of trusting that whatever it is that you have around you that you feel fills you up, trusting that you could let that go and know that the energy would still be there. Like those feathers, like maybe they're coming through as a symbol or just as a sign or just as a quick message, but I don't need to then go grab them and put them on my altar and keep them forever. You know, it's kind of allowing the messages to flow in and out and trusting that you've received what you needed to receive. There's this energy of letting go of the physical um, and trusting in the energy that will remain, trusting in what stays with you and that that was all that was needed. There's like, yeah, there's kind of this energy of peace, of settled energy, of resting and not worrying so much about how much you're bringing into yourself or just how much you, you have or, or anything like that. There's an energy of needing to rest, relax. And this could be like going and doing relaxing um, activities, but I also just think it's like peace of mind. Every little thing that you say I'll do Get up I'm tired of waiting on you Waiting on you coming night and day Get up I'm up on you Yeah, and there's also this energy of um, giving more attention to diving into like your own um, like the, own tradi your, the traditional practices of your own background, um, like tapping into your ancient, um, the ancient beliefs of your, of your background, of your people, of your community, of your systems. And this does feel specific to where you're from. Um, like I know that we can all find affinity with spiritual practices and cultures outside of ourselves, and that's beautiful because ultimately, um, it, you know, it speaks to our oneness, but the, every single culture has their own um, very ancient and very wise and uh, and special, significant spiritual practices. Every because you know, every group on Earth has been spiritual in one way or another. I believe, and there's so many gifts and traditions that are kind of. Um, abandoned for the more popular sects of, uh, of spirituality or practices of spirituality and it's unfortunate because we lose a lot of knowledge and wisdom when we abandon or when we when we prioritize when we make a hierarchy out of spirituality and decide that one thing is good or better or more um, or, you know higher vibrational or whatever just more valuable than the other and there's this energy of returning to your own roots, your specific roots. In this lifetime, where are you from? What do the people where you're from do? You know, this is not about your past lives. This is about your ancestry. 
in this incarnation? What is your history? Right, because these, like every single person here is representing a different energy and a different culture. She's representing, I'm pretty sure like Celtic, and she's indigenous uh, in, a, in America, I can't remember what, um, I think Hopi, Hopi or Hopi. Then this is Atlantis, so <laughs> completely different world, right? And this is um, Mesopotamia. So they're just completely different cultures. And there's this energy of wanting, of spirit also wanting us to dig into that. Explore where you come from in this lifetime. There's a reason you chose, your spirit chose this family and um, to be who you are, to be from where you're from. Doesn't matter if you've been from many places in other lifetimes. Where are you from in this lifetime? And what does that mean to you? What are the practices that your people do in this lifetime? that they've done because there's also secrets to your healing through that because our bodies are also, uh, they carry that lineage as well. And those healing practices work depending on where you come. Our bodies are, um, they have places where they have practices that are in, in most alignment with them. And usually they're practices that are indigenous to where they come from, to where the people come from. So when it comes to your healing, if you're feeling any blockages around that, there's also this energy of kind of looking into what do your people do. If you've been doing a bunch of healing practices that have nothing to do with your own ancestry and you and there is a way for you to discover what your ancestors did and with the existence of the internet, I do believe that there's a way um, to at least get a hint and even with the existence of your ability to meditate and talk to your spirit guides, all you need to do is sit there and meditate and, I mean, easier said than done. I don't find meditating super, super easy. Um, but answers will come, and you just have to trust. And if you can trust that, then you can begin to build up those, uh, uh, that, tra that knowledge of your traditional practices, the ancient practices that your people have done, even if that information has been lost in accordance to the World Wide Web. You can find that because your ancestors are here with you in this lifetime and they're ready to help. And it would be nice to be able to honor them by valuing what they do, by valuing what they've done. Um, and this is probably, this is for me too, because I know that there are, I was just about, I was supposed to look up, but I forgot. I wanted to look up like if there were any like what were how did astrology work in um, in like South Africa that's where like my family's from on my mom's side or like in Jamaica you know because many cultures use the stars the stars is, and the stars and the cosmos are elements that are present in so many of our belief systems so but you know, the main astrological systems that we reference is like Western astrology or Indian astrology, or um, even like, you, I know that there's some Egyptian and Greek and all of that, but what about the other cultures? There's so many cultures, so many people and, and uh, traditions that existed all at the same time as ancient Egypt and ancient Greece, you know, but they're just not spoken about as much. And this is your time to recover those lost stories, to recover those lost um, ancient societies that were just as valuable. You know, put value into your own heritage. And there's so much value in Egypt and Greece and Rome and all these other places, Atlantis, Lemuria. But what about your people? What about your ancestors? They've been here too, just as long, some of them. And they have incredible contributions to spiritual spirituality here on this earth. They've just been wiped over a little bit, you know, because we create hierarchies. It's just what we do as human beings, but you don't need to participate in that. You can go and honor your people. You know, you can discover what it is that you do. And it doesn't mean you have to give up your practices that come from other cultures as well, but it's time to find balance in honoring what's within as well as all that is without, all that is outside of yourself, what's within you. 
that you're forgetting about? Where are your power centers that you've kind of abandoned in favor of these other systems that can teach you so much, but you already have so much wisdom just like stored within you that's dormant because you're not listening to it. You're not interested in it. And then when you find that there's blockages around how much information you're able to process and you're <coughs> finding that there's blockages in your, um, your downloads, what you're receiving, your dreams aren't making sense, you feel like you're not connected to your spirit guides, your spirit team, maybe it's because you have all this dormant energy that you're not paying attention to. There's no room for anything else to come in because it's taking up so much space, sleeping there, heavy, dead. Like a dead body, it weighs so much, it weighs so much more than somebody standing up and moving around. And your dead energy, your dormant energy, it weighs a lot, it takes up a lot of space. Wake it up, and then maybe you'll start to get some more messages. But you need to honor what you've already received. There's that energy of honoring what you've already received, which has been given to you naturally, your inheritance. And I'm speaking to myself too. Stand your ground. Time goes by so slowly. Every little thing that you try to do, I'm tired of waiting on you. I feel like that's a, <laughs> I feel like that's a message from our ancestors. They're like, I'm sick of you. Hold on. <coughs> They're like, I'm tired of trying to call out to you and you being like, ancient Egypt? <laughs> I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to me too. This is just, we're all getting dragged. It is what it is. Um, Malu Lisa, balance, right? What we were just talking about. Balancing the halves of the sail. There's so many answers in our own lineage. But you have to be proud of where you come from. And you have to find value in where you come from in your own history. We don't want to be stuck with only knowing about you know, like three societies and three ancient world societies. Because I guarantee Atlantis, Lemuria, Avalon, those weren't the only like, um, like mystical worlds that existed that we know are real. I bet there were so many. And I bet they also went by different names too. But we have a very specific perspective that we engage spirituality with. And it's... It's a block. It's a block on our language. It's a block in how deep we're able to go because we're missing like an ocean full of information. It's like how much we don't know about the ocean and that will forever, um, until we continue to grow in our understanding of the ocean and, and the worlds that live within that, we're blocked, you know? And we're cut off from a part of ourselves. Every little thing that you say I'll do I'm tired of waiting on you That's what the ancestors say <laughs> They're tired of waiting on us To come find home Like try and think about why you chose to be The background that you are in this lifetime Why? Why would you choose that? It wasn't for no reason, it wasn't random You chose this specific family with this heritage, with these specific practices and gifts. Why? Ask your ancestral team. Speak to the ancestors. Speak. Speak to the spirit. Every little thing that you say or do, I'm tired of waiting on you. Mm -hmm. Let us see. And Hotep continues to come out. I feel like he comes out in every reading. Standard ground is here again. Let me look at it. Is that, yeah, and the high priestess, the high priest of Atlantis is there again. Let me look at 
stand your ground, Leah. For one, there's a strong energy around um, the non-binary community. We're just being androgynous when it comes to gender and gender expression. There's a lot of energy around that. And I feel like what's going to be liberating also, and is a part of this return to the ancient, is a return to the androgyny. And the idea that there were no strict definitions for what, it lo what a man looked like, what a woman looked like. And there were societies in which they didn't even have words for... I, my sister was telling me this. There's a certain... Um, there's a specific community culture, cultural group, tribe, um, where they didn't have a word for, a, for, ma for men and women. I remember that. I can't remember which one. I don't remember. I might not even be really expressing that correctly, but that was a thing. There are groups where gender was not really important. It wasn't even a thing. Didn't acknowledge that shit. Obviously, there were understandings that certain bodies were different and energies could do different things and blah, 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 but it wasn't about gender and it was not this binary. And there's this energy of dismissing the binary, really stepping out of that and moving into this fluid, fluid expression that moves beyond what we think about men and women and blah, 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 and just getting rid of that altogether and just moving into this, this flow between states because you have it all within you. So yeah, it's a lot, there's an emphasis on the non-binary experience. Which is funny, because I made a YouTube video a lot, like, last, this past summer, and I was talking about how I feel, how I was wondering, I was, like, wondering about my own expression, and feeling like I'm non-binary, but then I also am a woman. <laughs> because it's just, like, I'm comfortable with they, them, and I don't feel that I live in a binary and all these things, but I also am connected to womanhood. And I think it's, we complicate it, but it's actually quite simple to just allow yourself to exist in the flow. Yeah. And it's almost like allowing the elements to be your covering, allowing the elements to be your body you know, becoming one with means that you're never without. And that's what I'm seeing when I'm looking at Leah here. Because the water is their covering, the water is their dress, their clothing. And it makes me think of life in the garden, <laughs> like Adam and Eve. <laughs> like before you became aware, you didn't know you were naked. Because what is nakedness when you are abundant? It's definitely not something negative. It's, um, it's abundant within itself. Abundance of rawness, of vulnerability, of truth, of openness, of freedom. Every little thing that you say or do is better. Yeah, there's a lot of energy around getting rid of the binary and of just perspectives of gender overall. Like, screw it. <laughs> That's the energy. Screw it. <laughs> Put it to rest. It's just not helpful for anyone anymore. <coughs> Waiting on your call, baby, night and day. And there's this energy of realizing and recognizing the truth about the ancient societies that, you know, we all look up to so much and about who those people really were and acknowledging where those people come from. Because with Atlantis and the imagery here, it, it's definitely giving um, like Samoan people, the Samoan tribes, like all of the tribes that have very similar um, tattoo art to this. And I know that this is also like, it's a traditional practice. And that's Atlantis. It's like acknowledging like, what did these people really look like? Because that's another thing. Part of that going back and accepting where you come from and, your, and understanding your own traditional roots is not trying to erase background and history and cultural significance when it comes to these ancient societies. Because what we like to do is we kind of like to whitewash them, like Lemuria, Atlantis, Avalon, everybody's white, you know? <laughs> Even like outside of um, 
outside of Earth, like the Pleiadians. Oh, they have very light, glowy skin. I don't know if that was the Pleiadians or something else, but everything was whitewashed. How was that possible? Y'all, be real. And no, race, maybe as a concept in the way that exists today wasn't real, but people who look different have always existed with different hues, with different cultural practices from different parts of the world. You know, we weren't just always all huddled together in Africa and then suddenly in the modern day world. No, we've been in our own unique traditions for a very long time. And it's very important that we acknowledge where those traditions come from. You know, it's not all white people. You have Greece, you have Rome, uh, incredible societies. You have the Celtic arts, the Druid societies, incredible. But not everything was all white or just raceless. No, and that's not a problem, that's not a bad thing. It shouldn't make you feel less than. But it's not cool to erase culture, cultural significance to um, an ancient society. Don't do that. Every little thing like you say I do I'm fed up I'm tired of waiting on you And you know what? Because there's this type of energy where there's like this There's like a shame attached to simplicity Which is because I'm thinking about why like Lemuria and Atlantis would be so coveted And then I'm looking at Avalon and you don't really, I haven't found, I haven't been able to find a whole lot about Avalon, though it's another ancient society that they talk about. And I know that it's also considered mythical, um, but I don't know, I don't really believe that anything just wasn't ever in existence. I just feel like it's a possibility, you know, in this realm or another. Oh, see, here's Merlin, yeah. And there's this, like, shame around the, the, simplest, the simple energies, the simple elements, um, which is a shame because you lose so much. Because simplicity doesn't mean it's simple in a negative way where there's nothing to it, where there's no complexity. But an appearance of being simple, there seems to be a shame around that. And I feel like that shame is pretty heavy in the white community. There's a shame around being simple. And so you don't want to dive into your own cultures or where your own practices might come from because you feel like it's not enough, like it's not abundant enough. But that mindset in itself is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. And it's, it's offensive to your ancestors who were out here doing earth magic, who were out here casting spells, all the witches, all the, uh, the incredible, you know, spiritual people. A real practice. I'm tired of waiting on you. interesting because there is this like focus on enlightenment especially with all the purple here it makes me think of the crown chakra and the third eye chakra and there's this focus on enlightenment and seeing through and seeing beyond this earth and and seeing beyond this 3d and tapping into what was above what was beyond that's the energy attached to avalon that i'm seeing um and it's interesting because when you look at the philosophies, um, the philosophers that we learn about mostly in Western society, which are mostly white men, it's that same energy, focusing on enlightenment, focusing on moving beyond these constructs, focusing on awakening, but in a more philosophical conversation. And that's powerful too. It's just that we need balance by bringing in the other side of that, the earth magic energy, the gifts that come from this realm. And the problem with not wanting to look into your own ancestry and see the specific gifts that you, your people, have contributed to spirituality is that 
you lose your own complexity by writing yourself off as simple. Because it is simple in a way, but only at, um, only when that first appearance, at first glance. But there's also just so much that's just been gotten rid of or just been displaced. And so that energy has nowhere to go. It's so interesting. And it's the same way, in, in, you know, the same thing happens to other cultures, like with cultures that are more like on the Pacific Islands. Um, like I'm thinking of Samoan people, of Hawaii, Hawaiian people, indigenous people to Hawaii, like all of those cultures. The emphasis, you don't get to think about the third eye. There's not a lot of attrib attri um, connection to the third eye or th crown chakra. I'm not saying they don't have a connection, but the stereotypical perspective on them, like how people see and perceive that energy is very earth grounded. It's very, um, oh, connection to mother earth. You know, we honor the earth, we're connected with the elements, but you don't get to hear a lot about their relationship with the third eye, with the crown chakra, with enlightenment, with the things that philosophers and like Avalon energy um, <coughs> is really highly connected to or um, attributed with. And that's the problem, you know, trying to keep things in single defining experiences. <coughs> not allowing things to be complex, you know? Like, why is all the imagery um, with those societies just only super earthy and not more, you know, cosmos? <laughs> not like this. It's always super earthy. It's a little, you know, it's a little stifling. It creates stagnancy in the way that we're able to expand. And especially because in this deck, I can find examples of all of the elements and all of the chakras and the connections to all of them in within white culture, within many different um, white spiritual practices. But with the people of color, it's really strongly connected to earth unless it's, a, it's, unless it's ancient Egypt and then it's connected to the stars. You know, but ancient Egypt also, you know, the white supremacist perspective grip has such a stronghold on ancient Egypt. And, you know, it's like considered, it like gets to be the special case. And so, yeah, there is this energy of allowing things to be more complex. And I'm like, first, not having a shame of the simple, but also not pretending like things are able to just be single defined, single handedly defined, simply defined. Things are more complex than we can understand, but that requires allowing people to go in, go back to their roots and tell the stories and write the history rather than you coming in and trying to understand and write everything down. Go focus on your own culture, you know? It's like priorities. You focus on your stuff, we'll focus on ours, then we'll share, share the information. But there is value to the indigenous people of those cultures doing the work, you know, and then you coming and getting to learn from them. You're the student. You cannot be a master of all these other cultures that you have no connection to beyond a desire to be connected, you know. And that's, it's not, it's just, it doesn't feel like it's the best use of the energy. And it does not mean that you can't um, use other practices. Of course we can, we should. It's just about <coughs> leaving space for your other, for your traditional roots to be honored as well. And this is me speaking to myself. I need to go learn about my specific traditional practices. <coughs> oh my God, it's so crazy. Look at what continues to come out. Chakra healing, chakra healing, and Leah stand your ground. I'm gonna read these both. And then we have Oshun, sweet success. So I'll read High Priest first. Okay, 
High Priest of Atlantis, Chakra Healing. Nourish your spiritual energy centers, harmonize from within. The golden era of Atlantis spanned 1,500 years and was a time of extraordinary spiritual energy. Atlanteans had 12 active chakras rather than the seven chakras active in most people today. They used gifts of clear intuition, telepathy, sacred ritual, and energy healing as part of everyday life. The high priest is an Atlantean master of crystal, sound, color, and chakra healing. The chakras are spiritual energy centers contained within your physical and subtle bodies. The word chakra means wheel in Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Um, you have seven primary chakras, spinning vort vortices of light that run along your spine. <coughs> Each chakra vibrates with life force energy and corresponds to a different color. Chakras link the, to nerve centers, organs, and glands within the body. They also store information about your physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual experiences, including those from past lifetimes. Chakras frequently become blocked or weakened. The High Priest of Atlantis says, There are many direct signs your chakras are out of balance. You may feel ungrounded, creatively stuck, or out of touch with your feelings. You may struggle to speak up for yourself, set boundaries, trust your inner knowing, or see the bigger picture in your life. Physical ailments may also show up as a block of blocked chakra energy. <coughs> Even if you haven't noticed the signals, picking this card is a clear indication that chakra healing will benefit you. To invite instant support, imagine your chakras as flowers or orbs extending upwards from the base of your spine to your crown. They glow red, orange, green yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. Visualize me sending your, my Atlantean crystal energy to each one so they become bright and clear. To complete, imagine white light surrounding your body and brown roots extending from your feet into the earth. Additional meanings. Reiki healing is part of your divine life purpose. Um, activating, you're activating your Atlantean 12 chakra system. The high priest can guide you to the right support. <coughs> And the invocation is, I easily balance my chakras. I am light and energy. <coughs> and then Leah says, stand your ground. Don't suffer in silence. Ask for what you want. Leah is an aboriginal Australian water goddess and guardian of women. Looking down from the sky, she noticed a group of women digging. <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> digging for roots in the dry desert. The men in the village had created certain rules so, they, so only they could leave the camp to get water. The women had to stay put thirsty and dusty. Leah decided to intervene. <coughs> she went into the mountains, dug her digging stick into the ground, and discovered a water spring that turned into a river. The women, now refreshed, formed their own community with Leah as their leader. <coughs> need water. <sighs> One second. Do not blow in my cards. <sighs> <coughs> Holy cannoli. <coughs> have an extremely giving and supportive nature. Everyone can always count on you to be there for them. You put others first, 
go out of your own way to understand their needs and bend over backwards to honor their requests. These are traits that often show up in empaths, healers, light workers, earth angels, intuitives, and sensitives. Goddess Leah is urging you to set some limits before you risk losing yourself under a pile of other people's needs, demands, and expectations. Leah smiles widely and assertively claims generous space for you by pushing her stick into the earth. She asks, are you a living saint? No. Are you being a doormat? Possibly. Do you have needs, dreams, and wishes of your own? Yes. Start putting yourself first. Ask what you want. Ask for help and be open to receive it. You may feel uncomfortable to begin with, but my waters will enliven you together, will clear stagnant patterns, and find fertile new ground. Additional meanings. Stand up for others in human rights campaigns and or causes that highlight injustice and prejudice. Clear stuck energy with water healing. Have a shower, bath, or swim. Visualize water as energy flowing through your chakras. Write down your blocks or fears and immerse um, in a water bowl to release. Leave a toxic or stale relationship. Take assertiveness training. Invocation. I claim my space in the universe. I stand up for myself. <coughs> That's interesting. And then we have the Avalon. Hmm. Are there any ways that I haven't read these cards that I need to read them? It's the same cards again and again. It's actually kind of crazy the way that works. <coughs> Okay, I think that's the end of this reading. So I'm going to let go now and I'll post this.